Howdy do, everybody. I uh, hope you all thoroughly enjoyed getting to see little Shirley Temple and Rebecca of Sunnybrook Farm. It's just an absolutely charming little movie that uh, I really, truly hope that you enjoyed. All right, so let's talk a little bit about um, this movie and what went on in it and other aspects uh, of this film. The major stars of the 1930s, with a couple exceptions, did not belong to the sophisticated royalty of the silent era, but to the working class. American audiences fell in love with burly, homely-looking types like Wallace Beery and Marie Dressler, with hard-working shop girls like Janet Gaynor and Joan Crawford, with proletarian tough guys like James Cagney, who you guys saw in The Public Enemy, and Edward G. Robinson, with homespun humorous and broad slapstick comics like Will Rogers and Joey Brown, and with an adorable little orphan whose only possessions were her dimples, curls, and boundless optimism for the future. And that, of course, would be Shirley Temple. So Shirley Temple is the single most famous child star, male or female, to ever live. Um, all these parents that have their kids go through all these various pageants and things and spend all this money dolling their kids up and this is what they are ultimately shooting for because um, Shirley Temple uh, was the iconic child star uh, and thankfully, unlike a lot of child stars, grew up to be a very normal person uh, who didn't have any kind of a breakdown or just lose it or flip out uh, like a lot of uh, kids, child stars uh, end up. Shirley Temple was everything that you see here. She was just a very precious, good little girl, uh, grew into a uh, wonderful human being, just a very, very sweet gal, uh, and avoided the curse that a lot of child stars today fall into of just, for lack of a better word, just kind of uh, flipping out. Shirley Jane Temple, known for most of her adult life by her married name of Shirley Temple Black, was an actress, singer, tap dancer who was best known for being an American child actress of the 1930s. Between 1934 and 38, Shirley Temple's films earned more money than those of any other star. By the mid-1930s, she was earning more than $300,000 a year. Folks, that was an astronomical amount of money then. And received more than 3,500 fan letters a week. Her endorsements of products ranging from dresses to little dolls brought in another $300,000 a year. So by the end of the 1930s, Shirley Temple, Temple was considered the most marketable, profitable star in Hollywood. And there are a couple reasons why, just as cute as a button. For Depression-era audiences, Shirley Temple provided sentimental solutions to nationwide problems. In her film, Shirley Temple's character was often an orphan or motherless. With her outgoing personality, Shirley Temple befriended both servants like she did in Curly Top and black people like she would do in The Littlest Rebel. It was during this period in the depth of the Great Depression when her films were seen as bringing hope and optimism that President Franklin Roosevelt was reportedly proclaimed as long as our country has Shirley Temple, we'll be all right. Now, you all need to understand that, as we've talked about during the early 1930s, uh, you know, we were still in the Depression. The Depression may have begun in 29, but we were still in a Depression through 1934, 35. might be considered more of a recession by 36 and 37, but times were still very hard. And when a lot of people wanted to give up, give up on freedom and democracy and turn toward a more extreme ideology like fascism or communism, Shirley Temple reminded people of the great American values that we hold dear and why we needed to uh, not give up, why we needed to persevere. We couldn't give up for precious little children like Shirley Temple. Shirley Temple's unqualified love melted hardened hearts of both rich and poor and prompted uncharacteristic generosity among her wealthy guardians and or benefactors who then vowed to take care of those less fortunate than themselves. 
Temple was America's answer to the Russian Revolution, awakening the benign forces of paternalistic capitalism which healed our nation's wounds and united formerly antagonistic set factions of society. Now look at that sweet little face. You can just tell, uh, you know, she was just a, a good little girl, and it was that little personality right there that helped get us through the Great Depression. Rescued, adopted, and rewarded with untold wealth for her simple trust and love, the miraculous fortune of Temple screen characters made her a household name. In 16 out of the 20 films Shirley Temple made for Fox, she played characters with at least one dead parent. This was part of the formula for her movies, which encouraged adults in the audience to actually take on the role of her parent and caregiver. You're supposed to sort of want to adopt Shirley Temple when you go to these movies to see her. Shirley Temple's popularity decreased as she grew older and approached puberty, but so did the dangers facing the typical American family as it weathered the economic turmoil of the 1930s. One of the biggest sins you can commit as a child star is grow up. And here you can see Shirley Temple as she began to get older and grew into a beautiful woman and would actually make some wonderful films alongside stars like John Wayne and Fort Apache as she got older. Uh, but people just could not disassociate her from her little girl roles and it became very difficult for people to picture her uh, as anything but that sweet charming little girl just like it would be for Bela Lugosi for example to appear as anybody but Dracula. After appearing in Stand Up and Cheer with actor James Dunn, Shirley Temple was signed to Fox Film Corporation, which later merged with 20th Century Pictures to become 20th Century Fox in late 1933. Later, she was paired with Dunn in several films, notably her breakthrough movie Bright Eyes, produced by Saul Wurzel. Bright Eyes would be the film that saved Fox from near bankruptcy in 1934 at the height of the Great Depression. It was in Bright Eyes that Temple first performed the song that would become one of her trademarks on the good ship Lollipop. This was closely followed by the film Curly Top in which she first sang another trademark song, Animal Crackers in My Soup, which would become her most famous little song. So just like Dracula saved Universal from collapse and ruin during the Depression, Bright Eyes and Shirley Temple is what saved Fox from collapse during the Depression. Now, somebody else who uh, you guys saw in this wonderful little movie was a great actor and tap dancer, one of the greatest tap dancers in American history named Bill Robinson, who was known as Mr. Bojangles. Uh, Bill Robinson was an African-American tap dancer and actor of stage and film. At the age of six, Bill Robinson began dancing for a living, appearing as a hoofer or a song and dance man in local beer gardens. He soon dropped out of school to pursue dancing as a career, gaining great success as a nightclub and musical comedy performer, and during the next 25 years became one of the toasts of Broadway. Not until he was 50 years old did he actually get to dance for white audiences, having devoted his early career exclusively to appearances on the black theater circuit. So there's Bill Robinson, and he would make several movies with Shirley Temple. And this is just so significant. As you saw in uh, Rebecca of Sunnybrook Farm, we are making a little progress here uh, because, folks, for an African-American man to appear in a movie and dance with and hold hands with and interact with on equal terms a little white girl, that was a very great big leap forward, folks. And again, uh, yes, we're making baby steps here toward... Um, equality, but the fact that Shirley Temple uh, was in movies with him and would interact with him as her equal on screen did a great deal for race relations in the 1930s. <clears throat> in 1908 in Chicago, Bill Robinson met Marty Forkins, who would become his lifelong manager. Under Forkins' tutelage, Robinson would mature and begin working as a solo act in nightclubs. The publicity gradually came to surround him, included the creation of his famous stair dance, which he claimed to have invented on the spur of the moment when he was receiving an honor from the King of England 
who was just standing at the top of a flight of stairs, and Bill Robinson would later say, hey, my feet just danced right up to be honored. Uh, and uh, this is how he came up with the stair dance that you actually got a chance to see in Rebecca of Sunnybrook Farm at the end of the movie when they were the toy soldiers. So here is uh, in The Littlest Rebel, uh, Shirley Temple dancing with Bill Robinson, and they are doing his stair dance. Toward the end of the vaudeville era, a white impresario named Lou Leslie produced Black Birds of 28, a black review for white audiences featuring Bill Robinson and other black stars. From then on, Bill Robinson's public role was that of a dapper, smiling, plaid-suited ambassador to the white world, maintaining a tenuous connection with the black show business circles through his continuing patronage of the Hoofers Club, an entertainer's haven in Harlem. Consequently, black people and whites develop differing opinions of him. To whites, for example, Mr. Bojangles meant a happy-go-lucky guy, while the black variety artist Tom Flatcher claimed it was slang for, quote, squabbler, uh, meaning that there were some African Americans who saw Bill Robinson as kind of a sellout to the white community and for playing into stereotypes that white audiences often had of African Americans. After 1930, black reviews began waning in popularity, but Bill Robinson remained in vogue with white audiences for more than a decade in some 14 movies produced by companies like RKO, Fox, and Paramount. Most of them had musical settings in which he played old-fashioned roles in nostalgic romances. Bill Robinson's most frequent role was that of the antebellum butler, meaning pre-war, pre-Civil War, opposite Shirley Temple in films like The Little Colonel, The Littlest Rebel, Rebecca of Sunnybrook Farm, just around the corner, or with Will Rogers in Old Kentucky. So there is Bill Robinson practicing with adorable little Shirley Temple backstage, a musical number. And there she is in the Little Colonel with Bill Robinson. Bill Robinson was actually dogged by lifelong personal demons, enhanced by having to endure the indignities of racism in Hollywood, despite his great success that still limited his career opportunities. A favorite Bill Robinson anecdote was that he seated himself in a restaurant and a white customer objected to his presence in the restaurant. When the manager suggested it maybe might be better if Bill Robinson left the restaurant, Robinson smiled and asked the manager for a $10 bill. Politely asking to borrow the note for a moment, Bill Robinson added six $10 bills from his own wallet and mixed them up then extended the seven bills together, adding, here, let's see you pick out the colored one, meaning, you know, my money is just as good as anybody's in here. The restaurant manager would serve Bill Robinson without further delay. A notorious gambler and a high liver with a big heart, Bill Robinson was a soft touch for anybody down on their luck or with a good story. During his lifetime, Bill Robinson spent a fortune, but his haunting memories of surviving on the streets as a child never left him prompting many acts of generosity. In 1933, while in his hometown of Richmond, he saw two children risk speeding traffic to cross the street because there was no stoplight at the intersection. Robinson went to the city and would provide the money to have a safety traffic light installed. In 1973, a statue of Mr. Bojangles, Bill Robinson, was erected in a small park at that intersection. In 1989, a joint U.S. Senate House resolution declared National Tap Dancing Day to be May 25th, the anniversary of Bill Robinson's birth. Now, Rebecca of Sunnybrook Farm was a movie made in 1938 and was a 20th century musical Fox, made by Fox feature film starring Shirley Temple and Randolph Scott in a story about a talented orphan's trials and tribulations after winning a radio audition to represent a breakfast cereal. Directed by Alan Dwan, the film is loosely based rather, upon the children's book Rebecca of Sunnybrook Farm by Kate Douglas Wiggin. The show features two musical high points, Temple singing a medley of all her hit tunes, and a finale in which Temple as a toy soldier dances with Bill Robinson on a flight of stairs. I really hope you enjoyed this movie. This is, uh, I guess, of all of Shirley Temple's movies, uh, this is my favorite, and it just has so much, including that medley of all the little songs that she had sung uh, prior to uh, this movie and all the movies she had appeared in, and I really hope that you enjoyed it. So 
make sure that you submit your notes, and I will see you soon.